friends, my name's Mac. Welcome to episode two of McMaster University's Learn It, Build It, Create It program. Now, last time you saw this face, you created your very own foosball tables. Now, for those of you who don't know, it's been really hot outside. So today we are making an aquatically inspired game called Battleships. While many of you may be familiar with the Battleship game played with red and white pegs, Battleship used to be a pencil and paper game. However, the oldest known version of the game, then called Basilinda, was created in 1890 by E.I. Horseman. But today, you can create your very own version of the game, as big as you want, or as small as you want, using nothing but the stuff you have around the house. However, before we consider doing any of these activities, before we think about playing Battleship, we must exercise to improve our creative and critical thinking. Follow me. Throughout history, various sailors and seafarers had to stay quick on their feet because, often, the decks of their boats or ships would be slippery from the water splashed on board. This exercise is called the tightrope walk. All you need is a line on a floor. I like to use the edge of a carpet. Start on one end of the line. Go on your tiptoes and walk across the edge without stepping off the line like this. If you prefer to do this exercise seated, sit with your feet flat to the floor and your back straight. Lift your arms like this and slowly rotate from side to side making sure you keep your back straight, moving back and forth. These exercises are designed to help you keep stable. Stability is important for people who work on ships or boats that rock back and forth. Now that we're warmed up, we're better able to think creatively and critically about our battleships. Remember, you can make your battleship however you want to. However, these are the materials I use to create my battleship. Two plastic spoons. Two two liter bottles of pop, empty of course. Two halves of an egg carton container. Make sure to use the part of the container that holds the eggs. Five elastic bands. Three wooden skewers. You can use any old stick you find outside too if you don't have wooden skewers. Tape, I'm using my handy dandy painter's tape again. However, if you don't have tape or you want to use a different type of sticky substance, you can also use hot glue. However, make sure an adult helps you when you're using a hot glue gun. Four, toilet paper rolls. Now, as you can see, I just took a paper towel roll and cut it into four equally sized sections. A ping pong ball, the lid of a shoe box, a pair of scissors. Now I'm using a big pair of scissors. Please use safety scissors. If you do not have safety scissors, make sure an adult helps you when you're cutting with a big pair of scissors like these. A stapler, again, you can use tape or glue if you wish, and a marker. I'm using a permanent marker here. You can use a crayon, a pencil, a pen, whatever you like. If you're using a permanent marker, make sure to be careful. You don't want any of this staining anything you don't want to be stained. And these are the materials I used to create my battleship. Okay, 
Step one, we are going to make our floats. What you need for this step is your shoebox lid. Now any old piece of flat cardboard will do. I like to use a shoebox lid. That's just the kind of guy that I am. You also need your two empty pot bottles, plastic, and you also need two elastic bands. We need to ask ourselves this one question before we begin though. How will we stop our battleship from sinking? Because we know gravity is constantly pushing down on us. It's pushing down on our battleship. It wants our battleship to sink into the water. What stops our ship from sinking? These two plastic bottles serve as floats. Now that's some fancy nautical term for big sealed air-filled tanks that provide us with buoyancy. Buoyancy is the force that pushes up on our battleship to stop it from sinking. Think about it. Buoyancy from the water doesn't want the battleship to come into it. I wouldn't want a battleship coming into my space. These plastic tanks will stop our ship from sinking into the water. To do this, take your shoebox lid or your piece of cardboard and place your bottles on it. Now, if you're using a smaller piece of cardboard, feel free to use just one bottle or a smaller bottle, as long as your cardboard doesn't sink or dip into the water. Next, you're going to take your two elastic bands, wrap them around your bottles and around your shoebox lid. One on this side and one on this side. So what you should have is a deck with your two floats attached to them. After you've created your floats, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. The deck will float on the water like this with our pop bottles dipped into the water. Step two, we are going to make a paddle wheel. Now, what you need for this is painter's tape or your glue, your two plastic spoons, two more elastic bands, two wooden skewers, again, any old sticks you find outside will do. Just make sure they're the same length and a pair of scissors. First, we need to make our wheel. Now, a paddle wheel spins like this. As you can see, the cupped areas of our spoons are going to be pushing water, pushing water. This creates something called thrust. Now, I'm not a very good physicist, or a physicist at all for that matter, but thrust is when we push water one way and we move in the opposite direction. So, for example, on a boat, if we wanted to go this way, we would create thrust and push water that way. So, to create the blades on our paddle wheel, what you're going to do is take 
your two wooden spoons. And cut off the handles. So you have something that looks like this. Now, with your tape or your hot glue, you're going to attach the spoons like this. So they are facing opposite directions. So you should get something that looks a little bit like this. What we need to do now is attach our paddle wheel to our float. Now, as you can see, I've added two more elastic bands to my float. You'll also need two wooden skewers. Again, any old sticks you find outside will do as long as they're the same length. Now notice that these skewers have points on them. Be very careful when you're using these. Don't put these near your face or too close to your hands because they will hurt. Take one skewer and fit it through the elastic bands along each side of your float, making sure they have that nice angle like that. So when you attach your propeller, it dips into the water. Again, the same on the other side. So you have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, using another elastic band, fit your propeller through an elastic band like this. Now, as you can see, I've already done this and I've wrapped the elastic band around the blades with tape. I'll take each side of the elastic band, wrap it around each edge of the skewer like this. Now you want to make sure that you have enough room for your paddle wheel to spin. Otherwise it'll hit your deck. So we may need to move our skewers further out like this. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Mac, buddy, okay, we've seen it, but how does it spin? I'll show you flip this up like this, you're going to want to spin your paddle wheel just like this. Keep spinning it, keep tightening it around the elastic band. I'm going to move it up just a little bit more as well so it doesn't hit the side of my deck. There we go, that's better. Spin it like this. Now that you've spinned it up, let it go. And you've made your very own paddle wheel. You can create thrust by pushing water in one direction so the battleship goes the other direction. Well done. Now, you may find with your battleship that 
it's quite a big boat. You may need a larger paddle wheel or multiple paddle wheels to move your ship through the water. We would be really interested to see the different designs you make. Maybe you put two paddle wheels along the sides of your battleship. Maybe you put two to three more propellers on the end of your battleship. We'd be really interested to see that. Please share with us. Now, to play a proper game of battleship, we need targets on our battleship. So, take your two halves of the egg carton container. I just cut an egg carton container using a pair of scissors. Take one half and under the elastic band, attach it to the front of your battleship and take the other half, wrap it under another elastic band and attach it to the back of your battleship. You can now put your targets on each end of the battleship. And you can put as many targets on your battleship as you want. Now, if you'd like, you can play this in a pool or in a lake. But if you do go in the water, make sure an adult is watching you. Make sure you are playing this with a friend. And if you need to wear one, make sure you wear a life jacket. To play this game, all you need to do is set up your battleship. You can spin the paddle wheel and keep it moving. Each player gets a turn gently tossing a ball from a distance. What you're trying to do is knock over your opponent's targets on their battleship using a ping pong ball like this. Clearly missed there. There we go. Second time's the charm, right? You can make this a huge, huge game. You can make dozens of battleships, play a massive game, make huge fleets. Imagine playing this in a pool or in a lake, and there are just different types of designs of battleships. Maybe you've got five or six, and your opponent has five or six, and you're moving these battleships all around the water and trying to knock over these targets. You can make a massive game, or you can make a really small game, one on one. It's up to you. This is the basic design of your battleship. Now, if you'd like, you can also decorate your battleship any way you want to. What I've done is I've taken my last wooden skewer and poked a hole. Oops, make sure you're careful when you're poking this skewer through. Poked a hole through the shoebox lid and I've taken a piece of paper, folded it up, stapled it together. Again, you can use tape or glue. I've written my name on it, kind of like a flag. And I just attach my flag to the skewer or the mast like this. Oops. And there you have your very own battleship. All right, friends, let's see if I've generated a sufficient amount of thrust to move my battleship. Let it loose. Look at that thing go. The power of homemade thrust. It's even got a spin on it. Imagine 12 of these moving across a pool, lake, or bathtub.
Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Thank you very much for joining us today. During this episode, you learned about gravity, buoyancy, and thrust, all while making some pretty cool battleships. Please reach out to us. Let us know about the different designs you made. How did you make your battleship move faster? How did you make it move slower? What types of paddle wheels did you use? And how many games of Battleship did you win? We want to know. Thank you again for joining us today. And as per established custom, the answer to the joke from last episode, what is the foot's favorite type of chip? Doritos, top that one. However, before you go, I have one more joke. What action movie did Spaghetti make? Find out next time on Learn It, Build It, Create It. Bye-bye!